Hello YouTube, it's Mr. Mags here, and the gamer, let me just give you a little bit of advice. You need to stop making a fool of yourself. It really shouldn't be that hard, but how is it that every single, every single article you make about Pokemon is just wrong entirely? <laughs> Every other website that I know of that covers games have people specifically for each individual franchise. Like when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, they had their website's Kingdom Hearts guy review that. Whenever a Pokemon or any, like they usually have like a Nintendo guy or Nintendo team ready to do stuff with Nintendo or Pokemon, etc. But I believe every single time I've made a video talking about a the Game of Pokemon article is written by a different person every single time. So, one of two things. Either all of you are equally incompetent when it comes to Pokemon, that's the only way I could describe it, or two, you all just assume you know what's best. You all just assume you're experts, and that's the team the gamer put on the Pokemon. I don't know which is worse, but regardless, this article might... I don't think it's the worst Pokemon article I've done on the gamer. There have been plenty, plenty that are just as bad, if not worse, but this one is still... This one is still pretty garbage. So, the title. 31 Things That Make No Sense About Pokemon Go. And just like every other The Gamer video I make, I'm going to stress how this title, specifically this title, 31 Things That Make No Sense About Pokemon Go, is not supported by the content of the article itself. You could have named it many other different things, or even there actually are a couple of things in here that are legitimate, like kind of concerns or complaints, or just like things that you notice that are weird. You didn't have to do 31 things, you could have cut that in half, and I wouldn't have made this video. There's at least 10 things on here that, like, I'll at least level you on. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I could, like, at least see where you're coming from. Why do you have to go 31? <laughs> that just doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. Let's just start with the article. Pokemon Go. It's hard to remember a time when it was not in our lives. While the hype has settled down over the last year or two, many people still play the game, myself included. While it was at its peak, did anyone else feel like a kind of like a kind of peace fall on society? So many people were playing, battling, hanging in parts, and helping each other out. It was a really nice vibe. It was great to drive through at night with friends catching Pokemon or spotting other players wandering around. The world was a little more chill for once, which was great. I miss it, to be honest. We could do with that kind of vibe again. So many people were brought together and bonded over one thing. It was so big that I honestly feel that Pokemon Go will be written in the history books as an iconic moment in human history. Look forward to seeing our memes and textbooks, friends. I don't think that'll happen, but you know what? That first paragraph right there, nothing really bad about that. It's just, this is just a you know basic summary of his, oh, sorry, her feelings towards the game itself. And that's fine for an intro paragraph to kind of set the tone of the article as a whole. I just kind of feel that the rest of the article could have could have come across with the same the same vibe as that first paragraph, but it really doesn't. So let's continue. That being said, it has also had some crazy stuff happen to it. There were bad events, mass hysteria, crimes were solved and caused, which the people like finding dead bodies or like solving various crimes just by virtue of just playing Pokemon Go and just walking around town. That is kind of weird, I'll admit. Like kind of crazy, but yeah. People are really people are really into Pokemon Go, and Nintendo underestimated how how huge a little prank would become. Not that they are bothered since it made them bank. A lot of people seem to kind of misconstrue exactly how much input N Nintendo themselves had in this project. Of course, you know, they hold 
think it's like a third or a fourth of, or th I think it's either a third or like 40% of the Pokemon company. So like they still had a lot of say in the making of it, but as far as them making bank from it, it split like three or four different ways and they didn't really make as much money as a lot of people think. It was a crazy trend that, that made crazy things happen all over the world. People were really into this game, so things were bound to, so things were bound to happen. Also, I was a proud member of Team Instri Instinct, so get wrecked. Again, like that paragraph right there, it's fine. Like, you kind of gave a little hint of just a couple of things that you're going to be touching on. Mass hysteria, bad events, weird crimes that, like, that happened or were caused by or solved by this, by this game. All of those I could easily see falling under things that don't make sense about this game. When I first read that paragraph, I was like, oh, maybe this article might actually be sensible. And you know what? The first, the first entry actually kind of feels like that. The first entry talks about the fact, I'm not going to read every single, every single paragraph because there's 31 entries for some stupid reason, but the first one talks about how there are some just very, very weird locations that are Pokestops. Like, yeah, it makes sense for the White House and churches and other, like, pretty significant, you know, pieces of of uh, ma ma major landmarks around, around like, certain towns. It makes sense for those to be, to be Pokestops, but, like, there are definitely some weird places, like, even around, even around campus here, they're just some weird places that, like, I never would have expected that to, like, weird murals or, like, some random houses that, like, I don't know. They just don't really seem to be as significant as, as other things like churches or even, like, dorm rooms around campus. They just don't really feel like they deserve to be a, <laughs> to be a location um, for a Pokestop. But so... That one in particular, I I don't disagree with. There are definitely some weird pokey stops. Next one is I'm not, again I'm not going to read this one in particular, but the new popular kid in town. It essentially just talks about how Pokemon Go became super popular. How is that weird? How does that not make sense? Pokemon is objectively like maybe. Arguably the number one most recognizable brand on the planet when it comes to games. Maybe only second to Mario. I I don't know why it would be weird or not make sense for Pokemon to to become this massive success. Maybe specifically the fact that it had people playing it more than people more people were playing it than people on Tinder or Facebook, etc. But I don't know, that just doesn't seem like that big of a stretch to me personally, but again, not that bad. It maybe maybe the the person writing this article just didn't expect it to blow up to the massive success that it was. And for them that doesn't make sense. I'll give that one a pass. Not just a prank anymore. Again, this is very weird. The fact that it started out as an April Fool's Day prank with between Nintendo and Google Maps. That's honestly kind of funny that this thing that was just a one-off April Fool's prank turned into an entire game two years later. That's kind of crazy. I wouldn't necessarily say that it doesn't make sense per se, but it's still kind of cool and weird at the same time. Another game helped make Pokemon Go. Um, this is the first one I have major problems with because this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with not making sense about Pokemon Go like the title of the article suggests the so years before Pokemon Go was released Niantic had a different game that just Essentially, people like walking around towns, marking significant land or like what they think significant landmarks were around town. And I don't know exactly what the purpose of the of that game was, but they used the data collected in that game 
I don't even think it was nec- that game was designed to further, you know, be used in Pokemon Go, but regardless of use that information as the backbone for for Pokemon Go. Ingress, that's what it's called. Yeah, Ingress. And is that weird? No. They weren't gonna spend millions, probably millions of dollars doing R and D going through every single location on the planet a a second time. (laughs) It made sense. Oh, they already had this data from Ingress. So just put that information into Pokemon Go. That just makes sense. Hopping on the bandwagon. You already said this. Essentially, this is the same entry as the new popular kid in town. Specifically, this one's talking about the fact that big YouTubers got into it, but it's that happens with every every single major major event in gaming. Fortnite, Minecraft, uh, battle royales in general, Pokemon Go. Like there, every single time there's a big major trend in gaming, a lot of major YouTubers hop into it. So that's just going to happen. So you you could have put you could have completely scrapped this one from the list and nothing would have changed. You could have gotten a Pikachu from the start. That that doesn't not make sense. That actually makes perfect sense. Fan service is what this game was founded on. You're not. They honestly would have kind of. Atlantic honestly would would have been kind of dumb to not at least have the option for trainers. To get a Pikachu as a starter. Is it a little is it a little weird how to get it? Sure. But there's still the option there, and that's not weird. It doesn't not make sense. It actually makes perfect sense. And like you said here, don't weep, there's still plenty of Pikachu to catch. I I don't really know what you're trying to get at with this one in particular. Buddy on my shoulder. He, yeah, you, you, you. That this make this doesn't. Uh, how does this not make sense? How does Pikachu or Eevee, um, being able to put being put on your shoulder? I think it might just be Pikachu. If how does that not make sense? That's. Ash's whole thing with Pikachu to be him to be, have Pikachu on his shoulder at all times. Is it the fact that you have to feed now has to collect 10 candies while you're walking? Is is it the fact that it's only Pikachu? Actually, I don't even know if it is only Pikachu. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's anything like below a certain below a certain weight, but I could be wrong. But regardless, even if it is only Pikachu, that makes sense given the canon of the show. So, yeah, that that just that makes sense. That that's the opposite of not making sense. <laughs> oh snap! I see that reference. Uh, y- yeah. Um. That's this. This isn't weird. It this this made perfect sense. Any even when the April Fool's Day prank happened, people still make connections to Pokemon Snap. They're like, "Oh, I want you know, a virtual reality Pokemon Snap style game," and then we basically got that in Pokemon Go. It would be kind of weird if there weren't Pokemon Snap references or and Easter eggs in in Pokemon Go. I don't. I don't know. This this makes sense to me. I. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I. I just don't know exactly what your what the gain was for you to put this. Really, most of these that I've talked about or and are going to talk about on this list, but were you not expecting Pokemon Go to have Pokemon references in them? Because that makes sense to me. I don't know. Missing no reference. Again, it doesn't not make sense, but this one in particular, honestly, is probably one that, like, 
if you were to ask me, oh, what Pokemon references would you expect to see in Pokemon Go? I would not expect a, a missing no reference. Um, does it make sense to me that it's actually in there? Sure, but it is. It's not one that you can like easily transfer from a glitch into Pokemon Go. So I'll give this one a pass. It it's a reference, but so it makes sense per se. But it's definitely one that I didn't expect to actually get in there. So I'll give you that. Businesses are catching players. This isn't weird. Businesses are just feeding into the hype. They're going along with the trend to get more service. That that makes sense. You don't know a lot of businesses, especially like when when community days or other events are going on, they pop instances or um or uh can't remember what they're called, but when you lure or they pop lure, yeah, they pop lures on the Pokestop that's like at or near their business, and then like drawing people into their business to just kind of stay there or you know do what like you know get coffee or whatever their business has. That just kind of makes sense. It literally makes business perfect business sense for businesses to do this. Lighter than a feather. Here he or she complains about the the um the weight of certain Pokemon not really lining up. And I'll maybe give you this one. Actually these the next two are about weight, which you easily could have smushed them together and just been like weight is a problem or like weight is weird. You you have you still have alliteration there, weight is weird or whatever. And she kind of questions why certain Pokemon have, like, such a giant weight dis difference. Like, XL is some, like, XL Pokemon are sometimes, like, eight times bigger than, 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 uh, than the smallest variation of that Pokemon. So it is a little weird how, like, something like a Pidgey can be, can actually be heavier than a, than a Doduo, who is actually 86 pounds. Which Doduo being 86 is really weird to me. <laughs> I just, I like, I didn't re realize that until I realized, wait, why do you put Doduo next to Ry Rhyhorn and Gyarados? And I was like, oh, Doduo is actually pretty heavy. But regardless, it's kind of weird that Pidgey could theoretically be heavier than a Doduo. Or even a Rhyhorn. I'm not sure if Pidgey can get heavier than a Rhyhorn, but still, Rhyhorn and Gyarados being pretty light. Or a Diglett being super heavy. That is, I'll admit, that is a little weird, and it, that isn't really reflected as drastically within the games themselves. There are missions, especially in Ruby and Sapphire, that make it so that you you need to take certain weighted Pokemon to certain people, and you'll get prizes. Um, and uh, in in the Lake of Rage, I think, in Gen Two games and the remakes, you take a you take various weights of magic carps and you get certain things from a from a fisherman. But they're not as drastic as they are in Pokemon Go. So I'll I'll give you these two. This next one, I'm just gonna read its entirety because this is the first one I just completely disagree with. It is well known that some Pokemon are more common than others. Whether it is Pidgey, Rattata, or Magikarp, you are bound to have plenty to ship to Professor Oak in no time. Okay, that being said, this rule does not apply to Pokemon Go. Certain Pokemon that are usually really common are simply difficult to find. Magikarp is one of the better examples of this. While a player's location has some impact on the Pokemon in the game, it should not affect how many are around. Okay, so with Magikarp specifically... A, Magikarp was actually way more common back when only Gen 1 was in the game, and ever since they've added new gens, it's been harder because there's just more Pokemon around that that can fill up spaces on your on your screen. So the the chance that you'll actually find a Magikarp specifically lowers. Also, when Gen 1 did was the only one. Magikarp wasn't that common because the way the game works, 
types spawn more often given the weather conditions. Magikarp would spawn way more commonly during if it's raining outside. If it's not raining, there's way less of a chance to find one unless there's some Magikarp event going on, which they had one or two of those. So, yeah, it, given, the, given the mechanics of the game itself, it just makes sense for Magikarp to not spawn as much as Rattata or Pidgey or whatever, since it's mostly, the majority of the time, it's going to be the weather condition that that spawns normal types more often as opposed to water types. So, if you're talking about Magikarp specifically, th it makes sense for them to be pretty rare. And back in Gen 1, when it was raining, Magikarp spawned pretty regularly. Back when uh, back when I had to do the, the mission, I guess to get Mew, to evolve a Gyarados, I... I was honestly kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to get another one so quickly because I had I'd, um, already evolved a Gyarados, so I needed to get 400 more Magikarp candies. But just a couple of rain, of rainy days, I got it up just fine. So, yeah, I for Magikarp specifically, it's not that weird. Excuse me? This Pokemon has how much CP? And I'm just, I'm honestly I'm probably going to be reading, just straight up reading most of the rest of them from here on out because it's gotten it's gonna get even worse from here another weird thing about pokemon go is cp if there is some logic to how it is doled out to different pokemon then someone please explain to me because it just seems random when catching multiple vulpix you will inevitably have varying stats between them however sometimes your level one unevolved pokemon will have way higher stats than even a second or third evolution, meaning its overall stats are usually better. This makes no sense. Evolution means improvements or leveling up. That's how the game works. You catch a Pokemon with... Let's just, let's just take your Vulpix and Ninetales example. Let's just say you do catch a Vulpix with like 700 CP. And then for some reason you find a Wild Ninetales that also has 700 CP. You have one of two options. Clearly you can tell, oh crap, this Vulpix is as strong, if not stronger than those Ninetales I just caught. Why is the Ninetales so weak? You could either level up the Ninetales with, by using Vulpix Candy. Or you could then just save those candies to evolve your Vulpix into an even stronger Ninetales. That's just how the game mechanics work. It encourages, essentially the, re the reason for this, it makes perfect sense from a business standpoint, the reason for this randomness is to make you blow through a lot of Pokeballs more often, trying to cast stronger and stronger Pokemon or, or stronger Pokemon with, with better stats. And that's kind of how it works in game too. There are plenty of Pokemon that, if they have perfect IVs and perfect and and give them uh, perfect EVs in their appropriate stats, they can actually be stronger than a Pokemon with zero IVs and zero EVs and any of their stats, as a f at least for their fully evolved form. It's not like super common for that to happen, but it is possible. So, this is just a more direct way to specifically cause that to happen you can influence it easier by just by catching more of the same pokemon and either leveling up the nine tails to get stronger or dissolving Vulpix. so that's it makes sense trust me why is there a diglet in my toilet this one is just talking about i'm not sure why exactly you've singled out diglet but like talking about the fact that it's kind of weird that like gas, there was rumors around that Ghastly could be found more at cemeteries, or is there are certain Pokemon here and there that like seem to spawn more often in weird places, and it makes it would make sense for that to happen. But like as far as the graveyard theory, that has actually been disproven by Niantic themselves. So, and also, you know, spawning in war zones, that. 
the game is still going to register that as an area to find, like, does just the fact that it is a war zone wouldn't stop the game from, from spawning Pokemon. So, I don't know. I can't have 50-50 on this one. Hello, Professor Willow. He just talks, or she just talks about the fact that Professor Willow was handsome. And like, girl, you do you, but that's, I don't know if you need to make an entire paragraph about it. Team rivalries. Does it really not make sense to you that when you have a mechanic that splits the fan base three different ways, there's not going to be rivalries. There's already rivalries when it comes to which starter you're going to pick. So you know there's going to be rivalries when it comes to which to which team to get. So rivalries makes perfect sense. I wish there was a way for there to be even more interaction between the different um, the different teams. Like the the gyms i really like that mechanic but i feel you could have had like different mechanics within the team itself like catching pokemon breeding pokemon or or uh like team valor for instance can gets more experience when hatching po or gets more experience when catching Pokemon. Team Instinct gets more experience when hatching Pokemon. Team Mystic gets more experience when like battling gyms or whatever. Like you could easily do something like that and have the teams feel make it feel like there's more of a reason to go to one gym or the other. Especially now that they have that little amulet that lets you change different into a different team i think it was only once per year but you can do that I, like i said i like i really do like the mechanic of having different teams i just felt like they maybe could have expanded on them a little more and made it made it a little more valuable to pick one team over the other good events what good events this is just her complaining of that there haven't been as as many good events throughout the you know throughout the years as there maybe should have been. And Community Day, I think, is a really good idea. Um, there definitely could have been more. Like, I do appreciate when they have, like, Pokemon-specific days or, like, you know, with the Winter Solstice happens, a bunch of Ice-type Pokemon start spawning or whatever. So I do really like those types of events. But, I, yeah, there maybe could be more, like... Like, I love how Valentine's Day... A lot of pink Pokemon spawn around then, or Halloween ghost Pokemon spawn. But St. Patrick's Day would be funny if a bunch of green Pokemon spawned. It's more, you know, stuff like that. So, oh, again, I'm kind of 50 50 on this. The math of EX raids. Let's go. Oh, these next two. These next two are just, just top tier. Starting in mid 2017. EX raids are battles in which players are invited to battle and you can get legendary Pokemon like Mewtwo. The problem is, it seems that there is no rhyme or reason to getting a pass. There are so many conspiracy theories over how to get one and how the system works that it's hard to keep up. Some say you should raid a lot of gyms frequently, while others say to do it only a little and honestly, reading up on the theories can feel overwhelming. Yeah, um... The pro Pokemon Go players, they, they know how to do this. There are specific gyms in in one area that can net you an EX pass. It'll actually say in the UI of the gym itself if it's an EX gym. So what you do is you just spin that gym at least once a day and just kind of hope you get one. Is there still a role there? Yes, but you can still tell which gem in particular are the ones that will give you an, an EX pass. I feel maybe the the chance should be a little higher since it's not every single Pokestop, and it's only like one or two per, per like, X radius, but if you play the game enough, you should theoretically get one if... If you play, if you spin and trade in that gym enough, so the pros they they know 
it's it's not that overwhelming for them. There's there are forums and forums and other stuff around around the, the internet to figure out how to do this. This next one, this one right here, this is the reason why I made this. I wanted to make this video. You gotta read this in its entirety. One fun bonus to Pokemon Go is hatching eggs and getting new additions to your Pokemon team. You walk for a certain amount of time and a cute little Pokemon will hatch for you. The weird thing is the fact that you actually have to walk to make this happen. There's no incubation, no swaddling or bright lights, just walking. Doesn't that seem weird to anyone? That is not how it works in real life or the mainline games. I hope all of you who just listened to me read that just cringed on every level you could possibly cringe on because literally every single sentence in that in there was wrong. It just it just was. First off, there's no incubation. Really? No 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 incubation? No, no incubation. There's no incubation. Really. The thumbnail you pick for this for this paragraph is a 7k egg in an incubator surrounded by other eggs in incubators are you freaking kidding me there's no incubation how how is it supposed to hatch i just walk with it it's weird if you if you just walk with it then all of your eggs would hatch all at the same time that'd be amazing if that were to happen but that wouldn't make niantic money now would it so you say no incubation like, like did you not, did no, did do you not have an editor to go back and like, hey, this is clearly an incubator. The eggs are clearly in something, unless maybe your editor has no idea what Pokemon Go is, in which case just edit yourself. Because I, in no universe do I want to believe that the same person who wrote there's no incubation could have pulled this image from Google Images an image of a bunch of eggs in incubators and not thought, hey, I should probably change the structure of this paragraph to reflect this, do it, this I guess, new information that I have acquired, even though theoretically you have been playing the game for a while, like you said up here. You, you've you said you, you played it a lot before. So why all of a sudden do you not know what incubators are? That's just very, very strange to me and just dumb. And also, just walking. You, you need an incubator. It, it would not be that easy. But, again, doesn't that seem weird to anyone? That is how, that's not how it works in real life or in the mainline games. Okay. Okay. First off, this does make sense. I'm just going to throw that out here. It, it makes sense how incubated work in this game. You, for some reason, chose to ignore and made that specific paragraph despite this making perfect sense given exactly how you do hatch Pokemon. Two, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that Chloe at least is one of the resident Pokemon people at the Gamer. I'm also assuming that everyone at the Gamer knows, knows Jack all about Pokemon. Because clearly, if Chloe is the one you choose to, at least one of the people you choose to write Pokemon articles... The people writing Pokemon articles should know how the mainline games work. Anyone who has ever played a Pokemon game would know, or at least, you know, from Gen 2 up, from, from ever since eggs were a thing, would know that all you do in the mainline games is put the egg in your party and walk around with it. You, you complained about all you do to hatch eggs is walking even though in Poke in pokemon go you you do have incubators even though you chose to ignore it but you said it doesn't make sense for 
you would only walk around and headshake, so that's not how it works in the mainline games, even though that's exactly how it works in the mainline games. What are you... What are you doing? <laughs> you... You got literally every single point in this paragraph wrong. It could be one thing... Maybe it could have been a thing where, like, you designate an egg to, like, quote-unquote, walk with you. Essentially, like, as a partner Pokemon, and then that's how you hatch them. Or, or something like that. But that's not how it works in Pokemon Go. You have incubators, and it actually does work like that in the mainline games. So, you... You easily, maybe, maybe you could have had a thing where... You were you could have complained about the fact that in the mainline games you only walk with them with no incubators, but in in uh, Pokemon Go you do have to have incubators. That could be a completely valid thing to complain about, or at least find a little weird. And I wouldn't have probably I probably wouldn't have made this video, but because you got this this whole thing very very bizarrely mixed up, I just I just don't understand. I don't I don't know how you did that. But it's we're not done. I'll continue. The tracking system. And yeah, I'll this one in particular, I'll admit this the whole tracking system, especially when the game first came out, was not very reliable. Like it gave you a general idea of where Pokemon were, but it was never it was never the easiest thing to follow. So I'll give you that one. So many Pokemon, so little storage space. Okay, are you going to talk about the fact that, you know, you only start with like 150, maybe, I think you start with like 250 storage spots, then you have to keep upgrading from there. And as they in, in, include new generations, there's just not as much space to hold stuff anymore. Is that what you're going to talk about? Because that could easily be something to complain about. It, it makes sense, you know, from a business standpoint, I don't like it, but it makes sense. But actually, no, that's... I, I read this article, I read this paragraph at least four different times, and this, this title does not fit this paragraph at all, so I'll just read it. It is super fun actually being able to live the dream and catch Pokemon, or at least get as close as possible to actually catching Pokemon. However, sometimes it can get a little tedious, especially when there seems to mainly be one or two types of Pokemon around. It always seems to find... I always seem to find a million Pidgey, it should just be Pidgey, all Pokemon, their plural is just their name, kind of like Moose. And maybe one in every 20th catch will be something else. It's annoying seeing my friends with their full Pokedexes and then looking at my hundreds of Pidgey candies. That's not, that's not what this was. Maybe there was just some kind of editing error and you like were originally planning on doing something like that, but then you decided later to complain more about the weird spawn rates, which I'll admit, I booted up the game earlier, there were literally five or six beatups, nothing else on my screen. So yes, like the the rates that certain things spawn can be a little can be a little annoying. But Again, that's where you have an editor. Even someone who doesn't know anything about Pokemon would have seen this not matching to this. It wouldn't have been that hard to just to say the title of this paragraph be, you know, the weird spawn rates or or whatever. But no, that that's not what happened. I don't I just I don't Does the gamer even like have Editors, like, it seems like every single, every single article I do a video on has at least some kind of weird mistake like this. I know they pump, they're kind of like Watch Mojo in a way, like they pump out like five or six articles a day. So maybe they don't have an art, maybe they don't have an editor or like they have to just rush through stuff. But that's, that should have been a very easy fix. But whatever, I'll continue. What is in this candy? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll also kind of give you this one. It is a little weird that, like I said up here, you grind up a candy, you grind up, you grind up a Pidgey, essentially into into its candy. 
you send the Pidgey to Professor Willow, and what comes back is a candy that looks and has the same color scheme as that Pokemon. That is a little weird, I'll admit. It I, I kind of wish they would have at least had a little joke, kind of like in uh book in the mainline games with eggs where it's like we don't know where they came from it, something similar to that like the first time you transfer one willow said something like oh you transferred me this pidgey but and, and i found this thing i'll send it to you could have been something weird like that but because they didn't address that at all people just assume a pidgey candy just is a used to be a pidgey which is is kind of dark but it makes sense, honestly. <laughs> There's no other context, but but yeah, I'll give you this one. I think that's like maybe six of of the twenty two I've done so far that actually makes sense. Or not, well, not twenty two, but you know, like there's that's six so far that I've been kind of okay with. Six weight versus damage. This one is just completely. Completely nonsensical. I'll just, I'll just read it. Continuing on with the weight issue from earlier, what a Pokemon weighs versus the amount of damage they can do can be really off balance. The lightest Diglett can do a ton of damage, while a tanky Rhyhorn can barely dent a car. It doesn't make sense in any way, shape, or form. You expect abilities and sizes to be different for every Pokemon you catch. But you have to admit that this is pretty broken. That sizes don't matter. Literally, the only thing sizes do in Pokemon Go is just an aesthetic thing. As far as I can tell, there's nothing about the weight that makes it any better or worse than any other of its same species, let alone any other Pokemon. There are many, many Pokemon that are heavier than a lot of legendaries, yet legendaries can hit a lot harder. Also, the lightest Diglett can have like twice the CP as, a, as the tanky Rhyhorn, and the Rhyhorn does less damage because it just has less CP. That's just how the game works. It's Why are you so hung up on the weights of these Pokemon being actually mattering when in actuality it the game doesn't really care it's just there as just inf more information about the pokemon you caught i don't know that's sizes they literally do not have any effect especially in battling and gyms so yeah an egg was born from another egg again if you played the mainline games you this this wouldn't be weird it is weird i'll admit I'll, well kind of but like they're canonically they're seeds so maybe it would have been maybe it would have been a little better for you to have like chancy as the thing you're complaining about or or um kangaskhan on the fact that it you know a, a already has like a baby in his pouch when it hatches from an egg so maybe that should have been the thing you brought up here but no you brought up execute which is a bunch of seeds. <sighs> Hatching eggs in the game can be really exciting. But after all the hard work, you finally get to see who you have been waiting for. The tension rises as you wait for it to hatch, and bam, you get an Exeggutor. 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 I wish I could highlight the execute that is right there in this picture. Come on. Really? I'm sure that's it's a mistake, I'll admit. Me but theoretically you're the Pokemon person, at least on site at the time, to be making this article. There shouldn't be these little mistakes like this. There shouldn't, especially when you you had to Google, you probably had to Google a picture of Execute. You had to type in Execute Pokemon Go, and this is what came up. Or even if this was, like, I know it's in Spanish or whatever. 
if you did just take a snapshot from from your phone, you still had to see execute and put it here in some form. How did you how did you keep executor there? It just that's a second stage. You should know this. Executor is a tree. Execute is the is the seed egg things. Whatever. Now there is a reason that the question of which came first, chicken the chicken or the egg, not the egg and the egg. I don't really know how most Pokemon are born in the regular games, but this doesn't seem like the right way, Chief. Come on, dude. Really? That's just that's just how these games work. They It's a Pokemon. It it doesn't doesn't uh <laughs> I why are you complaining about this? This doesn't this isn't a thing about Pokemon Go that doesn't make sense. It's a thing about the games themselves that we just chose to overlook all this time. It it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a thing that they just took from the game, put it in Pokemon Go, and because execute, which are seeds, but they look like eggs, hatch from eggs in the game, they hatch from eggs in Pokemon Go. So that's it. Gotta go fast. Yeah, um... The fact that like you can't you can't play Pokemon Go while taking the train or a passenger, at least have the option for that. Because you even say I'm a passenger, yet the game won't let you play. Uh, that is like especially for people who can only travel around on train. That is a little disconcerting. I'll give you that one. Equivalent exchange my behind. When exchanging Pokemon for candy, things can sometimes feel a little unfair. Sure, you will spin your weaker Pokemon over. You will send your weaker Pokemon over, but sometimes you send over one that is strong, just not as strong as your best. In exchange for this Pokemon with pretty high CP, you only you get a couple candy of you get a couple of measly candies in return. Surely the amount of candies you get should equal the amount of CP the Pokemon you exchanged had. This does not feel balanced at all. Okay, a few things. First of all, you, you don't get a couple of measly candy. It's actually, you, it would have made your point even stronger had you just kept with the fact that if you exchange each and every one of these Magikarp, you get one candy. If I'm not mistaken, if you, if you release a Gyarados, it's still just one candy. They might have had... I know, I know if you catch a Gyarados, you get like... Or if you catch a second stage, you get five candy then if you catch a third stage you get 10 i think they might have done a, they might have done something similar to that with the reverse like if you release let's say you release an ivysaur you might get two candy Venusaur three but i don't think that's the case but regardless you could have made your point even stronger by mentioning it's it's only one if, if that is the case two that's just how the game works. They they just want you to cast more Pokemon. It would be kind of OP for you to... Maybe not OP is the best word, but it would be... It wouldn't really make business sense for you to, you know, grind up to a Gyarados and then realize, oh, this one actually isn't all that great. I'm just going to release them and get all 400 candy back. Maybe that is how it should work, but for the... For, the economy of the game to, to stay where it is. Again, I don't like how it works that way, but I understand from a business standpoint that they kind of had to keep it that way. And also, you should get equal candy to the amount of CP the Pokemon had. So if I exchange this Gyarados, you want 2016 candy? Or is it just like scaled to like, Say from 0 to 100 CP, you get a certain amount, and, and then like up by increments like that. You could have worded that a little better. Ooh, shiny. This is another one that I just rolled my eyes at. Shinies and Pokemon are a big deal. You can play for months and maybe only come across one or two, if you're lucky, that is. While it makes sense that shinies should be just as rare in the real world as they are in the game, I don't know how I feel about their colors. Shiny kind of implies that the Pokemon is going to be shiny, so a gold Magikarp makes sense. But a red Gyarados, a green Zubat, maybe they were going for jewel colors, but I want them to be shinier. 
I, hmm. I, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to this one. Because Red Gyarados was just, that just was the first shiny, or like the first, you know, shiny you were supposed to get in games. So how are you going to tell them that that's wrong? Shiny Typhlosion maybe is a little disappointing, but it's still, I actually kind of like this, I don't like disappointing to you specifically, but I kind of like this color scheme. Honestly, if Typhlosion looked like that anyway, I think that would honestly be a better color scheme, but because um, it's blue, like I, I think it's fine, and especially for only the second gen starter, they didn't have the whole, you know, each starter has a very specific color scheme going, like every fire starter has to be basically either red or orange. They didn't have that yet, but I think this I think this color right here fits Cyclosion a lot better, actually. Maybe that's just me. But that's just how they work in the games themselves. You can't be like, oh, I want them to be more shiny. I want them to be better. Red Gyarados looks awesome. I kind of like Green Zubat. There are some shinies I despise, but we don't need to get into that right now. What did... Why does gold magic heart make so what do you want every Pokemon to be gold? Is that what you want? Because that's what you want to just say that and that's fine, but you want them to be shinier. I don't know. That just seems it just seems like a weird thing to complain about. I am a legendary Pokemon, but so is he. Legendary Pokemon are awesome. You have the literal gods who walk the earth and could destroy us at any moment watching over the watching over the world. They are both spooky and awe-inspiring. They deserve the title of legendary. However, Pokemon Go, there is more than one of each legendary just out and about for the catching. Multiple players can catch a Mewtwo at e EX raids or find one on the street. It doesn't make sense, man. So what you want is for the game to just to just <sighs> okay okay so what you want <laughs> is for only one person in each for each raid to get a pokemon is that what you want if 20 people are in a are in an EX raid. You want only one of them to get a Mewtwo. That would just be stupid. That that wouldn't be worth it. Also, or find one on the street. It doesn't make sense, man. You can't find legendaries in the street. That's not how this works. After you do the seven day try, after you do the seven days of Pokemon of Pokestop challenges, then that. Like then you can like find one that way, but that's not finding one out in the streets. That's not, that's, that's just, it would break the game. A, it would break the game for, from you to just be out and about, but two, it would break the game even further for 20 people to waste so many time and resource into getting a Mewtwo from an EX Ray just for only one person to get it. That would be stupid. So, what did you want? Did you want to waste your time and not even get a legendary? Did you want to have to waste Stardust and Candy just to trade a Mewtwo with your with your buddy just so they can have the one that you got? That doesn't make sense. Whatever. Two more. Why is Pikachu following me? Augmented reality is still in its infancy and Pokemon Go has been a pioneer for the movement. It was amazing to see a Pokemon on your living room floor for the first time. That being said, if you move your screen side to side or up and down, Pokemon will move a little in that direction, even if it is sitting down. It may just be me, but this makes me, this makes me out of the, this takes me out of the immersion and bothers me a little. Them moving to avoid my Pokeballs is one thing, but moving involuntarily feels weird. That's just to make the game more fun, dude. That's, that's all it is. It would be... It wouldn't be fun if you have to like look all around just to find the Pikachu. If I always play with augmented reality off, I think it's just a better player experience. But like if I were to play with it on, I would want it to be easier to find the Pokemon. 
it would be does it break the immersion a little bit sure but it's still a game it's a game first and then like an experience second so for the gameplay to make the most sense it just kind of need to do this you're different than i thought you'd be <sighs> okay i'll read this last one then i'll wrap up seeing pokemon on the small screen for decades has skewed my view of them a little it is one thing to see their stats and know how big or small they would be in theory. It is another thing entirely to see it right in front of you. It is crazy to see a giant legendary bird bigger than a car or tree come at you. Sometimes, however, a Weedle appears bigger than it would be when put next to another real-world object, which makes things confusing. Okay, the Weedle being bigger, just that's just it being closer to you. And you can tell that by at where the ring is. If the ring is like really close to the screen, that means the Pokemon is really close to the screen. That's why it looks bigger. That's all it is. And they're not going to make the Pokemon be super duper tiny and but still keep the ring the same. That just wouldn't make sense. So, yeah, another really weird thing to complain about. So, yeah, overall... There were maybe eight of the 31 things that I could, maybe, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll round up and say 10. Maybe 10 things of the 31 that I, like, semi-agreed with. I didn't really like any of them. There were, even of that 10, there were, like, maybe five that I, like, that I more than half agreed with. So, please, please... The Gamer, if you're going to make another Pokemon article, I beg you to have a dedicated Pokemon writing team. I beg you to have an editor to catch these little mistakes. I beg you to put more effort into each individual article, especially when, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it every single time. Why do you need 31 things? You have the option down here to just to like click through them like, you know, like those stupid clickbait pages that make you slip through every single entry. But you also have, or you can just scroll right on down, which means you don't need, you don't need as many things for people to click through. That, the, uh. <laughs> so how about instead of forcing your writers to think of an absurd number of things to put in an article. How about you narrow it down to 10 or 15 max, and then they can put all their time and energy into writing and editing those 15 things. Clearly 31 things was just too much for Chloe to put as much time and energy in because, like I said, maybe 10, 10 of these that I actually kind of liked. The rest of them were just either uninformed or just or just bad opinions honestly so i don't know that's all i got what did you guys think of think of this article is there anything is there anything about pokemon go that doesn't make sense to you i like to hear all that down that all that down below i got a discussion going down there and i'll see you next time